year, was it last year? No, two years ago. It was during Vanguard, right? Yep. There was a possibility <laughs> of the boys teaming up. Mm -hmm. How good would we have been if we teamed? <laughs> oh, wait, for, for Vanguard or end up two? Was it Vanguard? No, no, it was MW2 after Vanguard. Oh, you're right. It was it was mid-season MW2. Yeah, after the first event. And then it didn't happen, and then I fucking retired. Yes. Good job. Honestly, oh, bro, me and you spoke fucking a lot about that shit. Me and you have spoken a lot about that shit, and we would have been, would have been good. Well, so we were actually texting a lot because yeah. cause I had to, like, obviously keep everybody in the loop of where my mind was, yeah. obviously, when I was, like, thinking about retiring. We were texting a lot, and you were trying. You were no, like, "Bro, if we if I get out, you can't retire. We gotta run it." Like, yeah, no, I was I was really, bro. I really wanted to fucking run it, man. I was so down, and I knew like, I knew you weren't like ready to go. Bro. We had we had like skill wise. We had we had yeah, the skill wise one hundred percent. Skill like, wise, no. But you were definitely thinking about it. But I, I just wanted like, I just wanted to see how it would have went. Dude. I reckon it would have been insane. The irons would have been fucking. Oh, dude, there's nobody <laughs> getting past the irons. <laughs> the fucking 99 The irons, irons on land would have been rips. It would have just been the atmosphere because the next event was going to be a Texas tournament. Oh, oh dude. It would have been a Texas tournament with that team would have been fucking... That place would have broke. It would have broke. It would have been insane. obviously, I mean, for everyone that doesn't know, I'm sure most people know, but it, it got shut down. Seattle yeah. shut it down. Yeah. Um and honestly, like a lot of people are like, if you got AG, yeah. would you have still retired? I don't know. I, I genuinely don't know. Because yeah. my point of view at that point was like, yeah, I'm I'm done. Brandon's coming in. Like it was kind of like it all just fit perfectly. Yeah, yeah, Cause yeah. I was running a role I wasn't even supposed to run. Yeah. And it was just like, dude, like so much shit happened the year before, then the, you start the year, so much bullshit's happening. So much bullshit. And then yeah, Brandon's just sitting there, yeah. a flex. Well, now a main AR, but a flex yeah, then. At the time, yeah. And one of the best. And I was just like, it's time. Yeah. But we would have been fucking, we would have been fucking gross. Nah, we would have been. We would have been. been gross. Nah, that ass we would have been. Because you get hype, yeah. I get hype, Ant gets hype. Yeah. Like, the second Brandon is, doesn't really get that yeah. hype. Well, he's gotten a little more animated. He gets it, but he's, yeah. Probably because of you, honestly, because yeah. you bring a lot of the hype to the yeah, team. Yeah. At least that's what, from yeah. the outside looking yeah, in, it looks 100%. like you're up there. Yeah. I'm telling you, because if, cause I know if I got three, or if you got three, that fucking there would have been or it would have been any conference. The building is rumbling. Yeah, yeah, it would have been insane. Like it would have been way. fucking insane. Just because I could know the energy that like you bring that, Ant does it too, which is like even a bonus. Nah, Ant's low key like a He's starting he's starting to come out of his show with this, that shit. Like, bro, the, in the finals, he was fucking roaring. It's like Goku in the air fucking screaming. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, nah, we would have been insane, man, honestly. Like fucking energy wise and just the vibe, bro. The vibes would have been insane. The vibes, but that's one thing that we spoke about as well. Too much fun. fun. <laughs> too much fun. Too much fun. We got Rodman and Rodman. It would have been, it would have been horrible. <laughs> it would have been too we got much. old Rodman and young Rodman. <laughs> it would have been too much fun. So, AG. Yep. First, I'm not going to lie. So, whenever you look at, like, the history of Call of Duty, okay. you got, you, we've had a decent amount of Australian players. We've yep. had, like, Fido, yep. Luca, uh, Buzzo. Shocks. Like, shocks. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Like, a lot of talented Australians. You coming in, I would say you're the first that's really, like, eclipsed that skill gap that the yeah. Australians were kind of capped at. Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about your just intro to the league, like any hurdles that you face trying to get into the league and just like the difficulties of becoming an Australian player and breaking through that barrier like you have. Yeah, no, honestly, I've only been to one international land before I became pro. So I went to the first Minnesota uh, Open land and it was like an end up modern warfare. And that was my first sort of like breakout year, I would say. But the thing is, it got cut short because of COVID. Because like after that tournament, it was just stuck in Australia. Are you talking about the MN like intro land? Yes. Oh, there I went was to a, that land. Oh, there was a challenges. There's challenges one. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't see. And, I, knew, I don't even remember that. Yeah, part yeah. I was. I think you played. You played Dallas Empire that tournament. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you guys. <laughs> but um, yeah. Now for me, it was honestly like, I, I was lucky because my agent at the moment, uh, he was helping me out. He had like a like team connections and stuff like that, and um. I was actually supposed to join Vegas, Paris Legion in Cold War. It's supposed to be me, Paco, Denz, and Zed. Yo, you and Paco, I'm no disrespect to Denz and Zed because yeah. those are my boys. They're <laughs> yeah. both nice and they've always been good at COD. Yeah. But like you and Paco, obviously, no, now yeah. in the league, two of the hardest hitting slayers we yeah, got. Yeah. yeah. That That's, team would have been low key scary. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It would have been like a sleeper team. No, at the time, nobody would have thought that, obviously, because yeah, yeah, yeah. you still had to like make a name exactly, for yourself exactly, and, yeah, yeah. and Paco as well. Yeah. Um, but looking at it from like looking now, at it now, look at me. Yeah, nah, definitely. Because me and Paco, like, this is what I was speaking to Paco in Discord and he barely knew how to speak English. And I was speaking with like D Real, which is coach of New York now. And we were like thinking of Airbnb, looking at Airbnbs and shit. Like, oh, really? It was like wow. that. It was like so that. It got, like, yeah. And then it got shut down because of like the visa COVID thing. 
So then I just basically didn't join. Looking back at it, kind of kind of low-key happy it didn't go like that. Yeah. Like, obviously would have liked to get in the league earlier, but, I mean, coming to Vanguard, no one knows who the fuck I am. Bro, even my teammates, even Lamar at times was like, bro, I remember I was, Lamar was a higher level than me in pubs. And he was like, bro, what the fuck? You're not even playing the game. <laughs> You're from Australia. What the fuck? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, that's Lamar. <laughs> yeah. And then like, and then honestly, bro, the kickoff tournament, it all, all it takes is one. Like that one impression. Kickoff oh, yeah. tournament, we beat FaZe. I fucking slammed them. And from then, from then, it's just like, and when you play with Lamar, it's easy. Yeah. He loves the game, teaches it, and he gave me this super duper mega green light. Bokuch, I didn't even know, what the, I don't even know what the fucking hill looked like. You had the super duper. Exactly. I and mean, then you were flanking top attic. Exactly. You jump out of that top attic. Yeah. You flank the back. Yeah. Go back to top attic. <laughs> yeah. It was like. So I had a super green light, which obviously let me like flourish and like just let me, you know, just show what I was at. And that's honestly like, honestly, bro, like I, I was always better than like all the other Australians. I just didn't play the game because yeah. I wasn't like able to compete. So, um, yeah, that's honestly like. And. So. A little bit of a segue off of that that question. So no Australian has ever won a rank. Yeah. So you would be the first Australian. What were you saying? Put that shit on. <laughs> Put that shit. Right. That uh, would, what would that mean to you? Uh, oh and obviously, like, I mean, Australia. Yeah. That would put. I was. I mean, no one's even won a major before in Australia either. From Australia, so I was the first one to win a major, and when I won in Vanguard, but a ring is like, I mean, bro, holy fuck, a ring is insane. Ring's insane. Ring is insane. It's like winning like. Equivalent to winning an NBA Finals, fucking Super Bowl. That's what it is for us in Cotton. So it's like, especially for a person from Australia to win one would be fucking nuts. Because in Australia, we ain't got fucking much support out there, bro. So winning that, insane. Would be insane. Dream. Actual dream. Fuck yeah. Are you taking a look at all these yeah, clips? Yeah, yeah. What the fuck? What was your favorite year, honestly? To compete? Yeah. Uh, probably AW. You were insane at that game, huh? I mean, AW, we, do, we had 14 tournaments. We made grand finals of 13 of them. Besides, the only one we didn't make was champs. I mean, we that's really so, fucked that up. That's fucked We up. fucked that up bad. Who did you guys lose to a champs? Uh, denial? We you guys lost, get we lost to Denial round one. And then I think, who did we lose to? I think we lost to FaZe in losers. Losers final? You guys come top three or top six? Top six. Oh, you guys won everything. You guys won every even top six. It might even be worse than that. Might have been, no, we were top top eight. Wow. Yeah, we lost to like enable Aches Slasher. Phase. You always lost yeah, phase, yeah. I think Tommy might have been. I don't remember. Yeah. But I, yeah, let's get was, off of that. Yeah, that's, that's bad vibes. <laughs> that's bad vibes. We're, that's not what we want. <laughs> You're this is your third year in the league. Yep. Talk to me a little bit about just who you've teamed with what you've gained from them intellectually and how they've kind of molded you. You already talked about Lamar a little bit. Yeah. Just talk to me about like your past teammates and, and who really like stood out to you in terms of either teaching you how to play or giving you confidence or whatever it may be. Um, if you want to go way, way back, like honestly, when I was just, when I just turned 18, Fighter was the first person that I spoke to and we came fifth at the open land, right? From Australia, like first ever land came fifth. We're doing boot camps, scrimming pro teams. And this was at like an MLG land? No, nah, it was um, the open, Minnesota Open in Modern Warfare. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. That was my first inter international land. That's when I first turned 18. And I played with Fighter, Swifty, some of the people from like Mind Freak. Yep. And Fighter was like the first person to like, kind of just give me like that sense of like understanding like win cons and stuff like that. And I mean, honestly, he would he said to me, look, I've played like a lot of people. Like he's been playing COD for a long time. That yeah. guy's been playing... Since Ancient. you started. Yeah. And he was telling me, like, I played, like, the best. And he goes, like, honestly, when I play against you and shoot against you, like, like you're honestly, like, I see it in you. Like, you're one of the best. Like, he's told me this shit back in, before I was even a pro. Like, just when we were just playing in Australia. He's like, bro, like, I think you're one of the best. And honestly, when he said that, like, I was like, you know, I appreciate it. But in the moment, I didn't, like, think of it much, right? But then as, you know, join the league and, like, I was starting to, you know, see that I'm playing really well against other people, I'm like, you know, he was the first person to kind of give me that hope. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, of course. And then Lamar was like the one that took it to the like the fucking ceiling. He's the one that gassed me to the moon. Dude, Lamar gets such a bad rap nowadays. They're all like, Lamar plays too slow. Nah, nah, dude, dude, Lamar is a god like Lamar team. is the, like I would say, like, honestly, probably the best teammate I've ever had. Just simply because, not just because of the way he plays and like how he lets people do like flourish and stuff. It's more about the way he perceives the game and loves the game. Like he will never be late for a VOD session. He'll be there 10 minutes early. He's always so interactive. He'll never be checked. Like, and it's hard to stay non-checked. You Trust me. There's times where it's tough. Yeah, when you're sure. tired, repetitive, always. you're I mean, getting kill hordes, all this sleep shit. Sleep bad, you gotta yeah. come scrim, you gotta yeah. be here for an hour yeah. early. And there's, I can't tell you one day where I've walked in, my two years team with him, where he's been like, down. 
always bringing 110%, always very like active, vocal, always just trying to get better. Simple for the love of the game. And that's what you want and out that, of the team. Yeah, I mean, it's exactly. All, that's all you can ask. Exactly. For, and then when I'm, if I'm being like lazy or if I'm being like, I feel bad because I'm like, this guy hasn't done it once. He set the example. What gives me the right to be like that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So in terms of attitude wise, he's definitely in confidence wise. Um, I mean, he's been unbelievable. Dante and Mac, I mean, they, them two, which is me, us three, like us three just had straight vibes. I mean, we were just all delusional with each other. Like they gave me the delusion. Lamar gave me the like, the strategic delusion, if that makes sense. Like yeah. he's like, bro, you actually are like, you know what I'm saying? Like you're him. You're him. Like he would actually tell like them three, them two was more of like delusion. We just walk around thinking like on a given day, if we're hot, like we could fry. And those are my guys, man. So my teammates, I've been lucky, man. I've been blessed with really good teammates. No team changes mid season. Always stuck it through. You know, some people disagreed with it, but I believed in my guys, man. I never wanted to like get rid of them. So that was me. Now you're obviously team with the boys. I've got the pleasure of team with my boy Brucey and my boy Shotzi, uh, and obviously Kenny being brought in. Uh, just talk to me a little bit about the dynamic, like behind the scenes of the boys. Okay. So like this team, this team, uh, we have good vibes. That's one thing that I feel like. I don't know, man. Every team I've been, like I might have been on two teams, but it's always really good vibes, and I feel that's important. I feel like you want to be able to vibe with your teammates, hang out at a game and shit like that, um, have a laugh. You know what I'm saying? Um, so our team vibes is really good. Um, in terms of like obviously coming to this team, I feel like everyone knows we're all godlike, if that makes sense. Like everyone knows we can get our kills, we can do this, we can do that. So I feel like it's just been um, the adjustment period. So like, you know, playing with Ant, for example, right? Um, you know, Ant plays at a fucking insane pace. You know what I'm saying? Very quick, very fucking playmaky. Um, you know what I'm saying? So like learning how to play off each other, right? Which kind of like, it's been working because he just flies, I'm ironing, boom, get a few of them. He gets out of his spot, I get in my spot. Just like learning that and yeah. then I'm bringing the energy out of him, you know? Um, I don't know if we saw the process, but I was like, Tim, bro, like, I need you fucking energized, bro. Like, because if he's popping like that, like, gives me fucking that energy, and then he's popping like that. Yeah, so, elevates. elevates everyone, you know? Um, Ken, like I said, he's more of like the um, stay like level headed type of vibe. Like, he will never get too ahead too, or uh, too below. He's always trying to keep level headed. And he's very, um, gives me a bit of Lamar vibes in terms of um, just the way he perceives the game. And they did, didn't they like team together? Exactly. They were low key like a duo yeah. back in like World yeah, War II. He was basically in my spot. Like yeah. Lamar just gave him the green line. He was running around for sub. Yeah. So he kind of understood where I was coming from. And like, he was, he, but the thing is like the way we try to play the game now, is a lot more like we can get out slay, but still win. You know yeah. what I'm saying? We kind of try to play that type of way because obviously we can get our kills. But um, so yeah, Ken's more of definitely like, um, like keeps us level headed. And, you know, he obviously cares a lot about the game. He wants to win. So that's very important. And he gives off like a lot of, um, you know, good leader vibes. Uh, mm -hmm. And then Brucey, I mean, we, like I said, me and Brucey have just straight vibes, bro. Like me and Bruce just, Insane vibes. I know that I know Bruce wants to win as bad as anyone, and you know what I'm saying like I, like I love bringing the dog out of Bruce too. Like when I hear Bruce kill, call out a dead, you never hear Bruce say that shit. Yeah, he's just locked in the iron. Like oh yeah, he's always yeah. Locked. But when he said when he hear dead, like you know what I'm saying I know that like that's what I love. For me, my main objective is to get the energy up. But um yeah, my teammates are nah, they gross man. Honestly, like third tournament we've been um you know building a cam trying to get used to each other. But yeah, teammates are fucking gross man. Let's talk about Kenny a little bit. Because during the off season, there was a lot of rumors about who are they getting. Obviously, Draza was in the equation, and it ends up falling to be Kenny, which I feel like was honestly the best pickup that we could have got. Um, talk to me a little bit about Ken and just how you guys have meshed together on the team so far. Yeah, honestly, in the off season, um, I was speaking to Ann a lot. You know, we spoke about like Ken, we're like yeah, we're down, down to run it, and then. Um, I spoke to Ken a lot as well in the off season. We're playing Apex and shit. And I was speaking to him, and I was you know I was Facetiming him and stuff like that during the off season, texting him, just trying to like pick pick his brain, trying to see what kind of mindset he's at. Because um, people were saying some shit like he's like doesn't want to play or like yeah people. I was, so I, was, I was reading some shit. I don't yeah, know. I'm not gonna lie. People were giving Kenny like kind of a bad rap. Yeah. Like yeah. whenever all the rumors were coming out, I mean everyone heard like Draz's name, and I mean Draz is a beast. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Draz is gross. But everyone was like kind of disrespecting Kenny a little bit. Yeah, not for sure. He was and, definitely getting disrespected. And now that he's on the team, I feel like everyone loves just what he brings to the table yeah, in terms yeah. of like that leadership, yeah. that keeping everybody level headed where yeah. you don't want to get too ahead of yourselves when you're in a match. Like, yeah, I just feel like Ken got a bad rap. No, he did. He definitely did. You know, and you know, when you join Optic, if you fucking play bad, they're going to be on your ass. It's just how it is, you know? And um, uh, he's been good, man. Honestly, I spoke to him a lot. Like, like I said, during the off season, me and him just chat, chat, that, like, you know, what we think about the team and the dynamic and like how we want to play. And he was just, you know, kept like, he basically kept talking about just playing Call of Duty the right way, you know? And I'm a big believer in that. Um, I feel like the way I was playing with my old team was, 
we were, we were playing it correct at times, but it was You guys had like your own little ecosystem yes. on Surge. It was yeah. like, yeah. you knew Lamar was in the hill. Yeah. You knew that you were playing cuts. Yeah. And then- Other Mac, two were just filling. Yeah, Mac and Sib were just filling everything yeah, else. Exactly. So like, I knew that that ecosystem only works if you're killing. If you're not killing, then you're hard to win. And, um, but yeah, he was just basically, you know, just trying to bring that type of vibe. And for me, it was, for me, it's the most important thing when I speak to someone before we play is just, I want to see them like, their level of motivation. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You want to see that someone wants to win and no matter what happens, you're just strictly trying to win. You know what I'm saying? Obviously the vibes and shit come after, but it's just the winning aspect. And yeah. he gave me that vibe of the winning aspect and that's what I needed to hear. And, you know, once we hang out and play, like the vibes just naturally come, you know, if you're just, if you're a vibey guy, like shit's going to be vibey, you know? So honestly, that was, um yeah, me and Ken are cool, man. Like honestly, I respect him for honestly, like he's won a lot, bro. He's won a lot of majors and, um you know, he's What's not- he eight? Eight now, yeah. He's eight? won his eighth one. He's tied for like the most winning- CDLs and in the CDL. And so like for me, it's, you know, big respect to him. And honestly, what he brings to our team, it's, um, you know, it's a lot of a winning culture, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I think that's really important. You want to have like- I a, mean, you need, you need to have- You need someone that's going to, if you guys are bullshitting, we need like, I mean, we all do it. You know, if we're, if I'm bullshitting, if Ken's bullshitting, Ann's bullshitting, Bruce's bullshitting, we're all on each other's ass. Yeah. He's more on like the aspect of the actual, like nitty gritty, like um, core duty shit. Like, yo, we shouldn't be doing this. We shouldn't be, we should be doing this. Even though in the, in the moment, it might not be insane, but like in a tournament, that could be the defining moment. 100%. Exactly. You come down to one set of kills or somebody overextends or somebody fucking plays the wrong cut. I mean- But honestly, like, I feel God. like I feel like he's like started, but I feel like we've all like developed that as, as a team. Now we're all like like that. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. if I see Ant hit something, I'm like, like you think you should hit that? And then if he sees me do some shit, he'll be like, yo, I think you should do this. You know what I'm saying? But we're very open like that. Yeah. So um, yeah, speaking to me, yeah, Ken's been, Ken's been great. And that's, I mean, I don't want to talk about myself, but the best teams that I've been on have always had that open line of communication yep. where like, you can roast each other. Obviously, there's there's certain, levels. There's certain there's respect times. and line. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, I mean, even like the dynasty, we fucking you got you guys are going brutal sometimes. Yeah, I mean, sometimes we'd be at each other's necks, but it was only because we were trying to win. Exactly. It's, like, it's all competitive. Like, no one's arguing with each other because of personal shit. No one's gonna be like, oh, fucking the way you speak, fucking you sound like a fucking idiot. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. all about like Call of Duty. So yeah. All right, so obviously being a Call of Duty pro comes with its pros, cons, everything in between. What is your favorite part about being a Call of Duty professional? Fuck, that's a good question. My favorite part about being a Call of Duty professional? Fuck. Honestly, as cliche as this sounds, is just being able to compete at the highest level. I think that's like cliche as fuck, but like I'm a competitor. And I compete in everything. I want to fucking win everything. So being able to compete at the highest level and just, you know, playing for tournaments and just playing in front of the fans and shit. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of people get the experience. You can, you probably know too, the dope of playing on stage in a not grand a lot of final. People. Not a lot of people can say that, like, can experience that feeling where you're like, you get like consumed of dope. I gotta jump out of a fucking yes. plane to, to try to match that. <laughs> that's, like, I gotta that's what I'm saying. Snowboard down a yeah. super tall mountain <laughs> yeah. or something. So, that for me would be just the level of dope from competing, honestly. What about you though? What would you say? Because you, Honestly, for you, I feel like your level of dopamine that you've experienced compared to everyone else would be insane. Yeah. Just I'm, because, bro, like, I mean, bro, I've heard, I've been in the fucking, I've been in the other team when you've got free against me on Bokage, my first tournament. Yeah. You got a four piece. Yeah, no, they definitely showed and a lot of love. fuck me, the fucking, <laughs> fucking stage is shaking. Didn't I get a four piece and we had to reset? Yeah, no, 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 we, oh, we did. Yeah, I literally popped that four and then we had to reset, reset. the map. I was like, are y'all serious? Yeah. I just popped the four piece on rip. Yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, my favorite part about competing was I mean, just being on stage, yeah. just being on stage, Nothing being up there good. with the boys. Like, oh my God, the best. I mean, all the work and preparation you put in, whether it goes good or bad, like, you know that you guys are up there together. Yeah, exactly. And to have like the, the fans behind that, and it's especially whenever you win. Oh my God. When you win, it's a bonus. I mean, it's like, there's, there's nothing like there's it nothing. because your work gets validated in the end. Yeah. I mean, losing sucks. Like losing, yeah, it does. Yeah. losing sucks because it feels like the lows are low. Yeah, because you put all that work in and then it doesn't pan sure. out. But that's just a part of it. Yes. Uh, but yeah, I mean, definitely being on the stage, hearing yeah. the roar. No, oh my God. I mean, dude, the dope you get from like winning an event is just... It's unbelievable. Bro, you, probably, you probably had so many like fucking dope moments. Dude. Like for me, I've only competed for three years, but how long, how long did you compete for? Like 10 plus? Uh, Since you were like M up 3? 10? I think it was either 10. I think 10 or 11. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how does it feel like... Like off question, but how does it feel like since you haven't stopped competing? Like since you've stopped competing, like do uh, you ever do you ever watch us play or watch a tournament? And you're like fuck, like yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, like, I mean, I mean, like watching you guys win was yeah. like 
Dude, that feeling, like, yeah. I know what they're feeling right now. I wish I could feel yeah, that shit again. So yeah. I'm, like, kind of jealous yeah, of that yeah. feeling. Uh, I mean, even when I see anyone win, it's like, dude, you I know, know the feeling. they're about to go to the best dinner. They got the best vibes all <laughs> the night. Best vibes. Everyone's, Everyone's texting them. They're talking shit to everybody. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm jealous of that feeling. Yeah. Definitely, like, that winning, the feeling. winning feeling. But in terms yeah. of, like, the, the everyday... Uh, I this, mean, yeah, the sacrifice. It just gets stale. Yeah. I mean, especially for me, like I was kind of in a unique situation where, I mean, I knew I had like the green wall behind me, and I knew I could kind of go and do my own thing with yeah. content and all that. Yeah. So it was like it's a different scenario for you. Yeah. So I kind of knew that was there. Yeah. And it made it a little bit easier to step down, but it was still hard to step down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, one hundred percent. Honestly, for you, would have been like that. Would have been insane. Big decision. Very big. I mean, yeah, it was like. I mean, it was it was a crazy. That week was like insane because it was like, dude, am I gonna keep playing or not? I don't know. I'm thinking what's best for the team because I like again, I'm sitting here. Bruce is on the bench. I saw Kyler. Kyler was literally like talking. Yeah. So it was like, it was a hard decision. Yeah. But you, it was, you, you, I think I made the right decision looking back at. It. Yeah. I mean, as long as you're happy with it, because end of the day, who but it's know? definitely not as fun. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I. I I'm not saying I don't have a good time. I have a great time. <laughs> uh, but but you miss it. That level, again, you're not going to get there again. That's, I mean, the, that's what I'm biggest scared of. When I stop playing, I don't know where the fuck I'm going to find that dope. I'm not going to go play golf or some shit. If you I get can. married or when you have a kid, I can imagine those are yeah. like the only, yeah. the only that's two. Why lot, that's why a lot of people live it through their kids. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. They try to get their kids into it. Yeah, force go it, play football. Go do this. And they yeah. try to get that level from them. Like... I don't know, man. But yeah, the dope is, I wish I could put it in a fucking jar and just have it stored in the fridge. Yeah. And whenever you need it, just fucking. Prices. Oh my God. How many chips have you won? Two. Two. So you've been a part of two chips. In your opinion, what is the most important thing whenever you're trying to win a championship? Most important thing I would say is if we're talking in game, I would say recognizing the winning moment, like the winning kill. Winning rotation, the winning play. The win that's, con. Yeah, the win con. That's in game. Out of game is having that mindset of trust, like delusional trust. If your teammate says, fuck it, round 11, three hit the left. Bang it. No questions We're asked. Going. Pistols out. You get four wiped. You don't see the fuck, man. We should have went right. At least you didn't play it like exactly. scared. You exactly. made a Yeah, you made a decision. play. Someone made that call. So I would say confidence and delusion is like in terms of out of game, you'd be very confident, delusional, but at the same time, you can't just be blacking out, not listening to your teammate. Your teammate's like, yo, it's one shot to the left, and you're fucking looking over here. But the guy's here. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So I would say, like, out of game, in turn, like, I would say definitely the, you know, confidence, delusional, but also being, like, that level of concentration where you just fucking know everything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But in game, I'd say, in game would be the win con, for sure. I actually really like that answer. Because, like, it's really easy to get caught in the moment when you're playing, like, especially in a high-pressure match. You're playing another top team. It's really easy to, like, get ahead of yourselves, but... Dude, sometimes it comes down to one kill. one kill. Like one kill on a rotation could swing a game 120 points sometimes. 100%. How many times have you been in a situation where you've lost? You've watched the back and if you I go win that. You're like, oh my God, if I just got that kill, win the hill. If I win that, if I just go here. Yeah, if I just hold this. If I didn't fucking turn. Yeah. Got a bad timing. Exactly. Like, How many times? And then that's for me, like for me personally, like individually, I, that's such an eye opener to me. Because I'm like, fuck, if I just held this. The next time I'm in that situation... I'm obviously really active in the comms, but I'm fucking making sure that I'm not making that same mistake. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, I don't know. You probably had that experience so many times where you've watched back situations where you're like, holy fuck. Like, I mean, you can't win them all. They can't. I mean, you lose. Realistically, if you're a pro player, you're going to lose more than you're going to win. 100%. It's impossible unless you're fucking- At tournaments. Yeah. I mean, you can win league matches all yeah, fucking yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. And series is in whatever. But like tournaments, if you're winning more than you're losing, you're the GOAT. I yeah. mean, just straight up. Not that ass. Seriously, you will immediately become the GOAT. Yes. Yeah. Does anybody have over a 50% win rate? I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe. I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so either. But there's so many tournaments, so many little things yeah. that can go even, wrong. Even, not to bring it up on a sour note, but like, fuck that Vanguard. Me, win that control, the last round. When you were top? Yeah. Like, oh. think about that. Think about if instead of looking top, you look down the stairs. Yeah. I mean, if, instead of looking down the stairs, you look top. Yeah, I thought you were sliding you down. You thought I'm instead. sliding down, but if you just look top. And I think Bruce was one shot. Bruce was one shot. And do you know what's funny? And I think I got shot because I looked low. You saw me. Didn't you see me? I saw you, yeah. And I was one shot? Yeah, I you both lined I up. I don't even remember the scenario. Yeah, yeah. Now, you were like on the statue looking down the staircase, and Bruce like came around the corner to like double shoot with you, and you were both just one shot. Yeah. But like, that's what I'm saying. Those, those are the moments where it's like, you can't even watch back and think, 
why the, why we should have done this. It's, it's just, just like a, it's just an instinct RNG thing. Yeah. And like the t- tournaments are decided like that. Who knows? You guys could have went on to win that series and maybe you catch get some a, fire, catch some fire, maybe get another ring, you know? But people don't understand how fucking minuscule things are sometimes. Dude. And it's so fucking, oh my God. The amount of moments that have stopped me from winning more to just like thinking about my entire career, the amount of minuscule like losses is probably, I mean, I can't think about it because it'll drive me crazy. It'll drive me nuts. Drive me nuts. I couldn't imagine you'd be playing for 10 years and you've probably lost so many bullshit little tiny moment situations where it's like in game and out of game mindsets obviously help you get there, but there's some things you can't control. Yeah. It's just RNG, but then people look back at it and they go, oh my God, optics suck. They should have done this. And then they're like, bro, if I just held one lane, that's a fucking trophy. Like, we have a championship. Seriously. But people don't know that. People just fucking, you know what I'm saying? Like, they don't understand that. They don't get it. They don't get it. They don't get it. But yeah. Some do. Some some of you guys get it. Some of you guys know what's going on. But some, some, some got on no the idea. Zaza. <laughs> <laughs> Again, we talked a little bit about Seattle last year, how they hold you. We don't get the team, all that stuff. Now that you're here, and now that you had to wait a little bit to get here, has Optic lived up to your expectations? Because you said you've been watching like Optic since for I was a kid, a bro. long time. Since Black Ops Two days. Now, honestly, Optic for me, I, I spoke to you about this. Like me and you speak a lot about a lot of shit about this stuff. And I've got, like for me, Optic's always been like a dream to play. Like people want to play for the Lakers, Real Madrid, all that type of shit. Like for me, this is what it was for COD, and. For me, what's lived up to it, obviously the fans and all that type of shit, I knew it was going to be there. But what's lived up for me the most is like, like I always knew when you play on stage, that feeling is going to be a lot better when you're on Optic. But like, fuck, it hits so much more different. Like, you can't even describe it. No. You can't. Like, like I've been on stage where I've got a three-piece before in Seattle and I've got, like, I've heard the roar. But bro, when I get even just fucking two kills, easy kills. You get kills, a two-piece. Two easy. Both one Both one Fucking roar. And you can hear that. I'm cranked. Mind you, I am max volume. I hear all that crowd. And like, that for me is the be- the biggest like, like bro, we go to a fucking Toronto tournament, but our fans are bigger than the home fans. You know what I'm saying? So for me, the fan part is what has surpassed my like expectations. So I can't even imagine for champs. I mean, hey, green white champs, stage in the middle. It's going to be nuts. Everyone around us. It's going to be nuts. That's going to be like a, it's going to be an experience. Does that ever, like, bother you whenever you hear, like, the crowd? Like, have you ever overheated? Oh, for sure. Like, you hear the crowd roar and you're like, I'm, I'm going for oh it all. Oh, my God. So many times. <laughs> I have no ammo on both my guns. I'm just running at them. Just trying beating to, them trying down. To, trying just, to, <laughs> just trying to hit them. And I've now definitely had moments where I've overheated. But for me, joining Optic, that was... I knew the fans. I knew Optic. And I knew all the attention you get, good or bad. You know, when you lose... Fucking, it's in the newspapers. People are fucking celebrating, popping champagne bottles when they beat us. Yeah. Um, but obviously when you win, it's obviously very good. But for me, it was mo- mainly the bands that you see at the tournaments and the atmosphere. Yeah. It's like, I knew it was going to be a lot better than what it was before, but fuck me. When you play with it and you're in the game, that's like the feeling that surpassed my expectation, which is to me as a competitor as well. Oh, that, that's the number one thing for me. It's just the experience. Shout out Green Wall. Good shit, guys. I'm God, well, baby. Keep doing that shit, baby. Yeah. This is your is this is third. this your third year fourth year? Third, third. This is your third season. Yep. So you've seen a lot of players come and go. Yep. Is there anyone that you feel like you didn't get to play against that you really really wanted to play? Didn't get to. Well, I wanted to play against you and Krim, which I got to. You two are definitely top two. Um, believe it or not, I actually scrimmed against Damon when he was on the Seattle team, super trolley team. MW 2019? Yes. Oh, so trolley. Horrible. So bad. I don't even know how they, they had Sam and Damon and like Slack. Enable, like, Slack, they should have been apathy. They should have been decent. Better. I don't know what happened. They were running default operators. That's when I knew they were dog shit. I came from Australia and they ran default operators getting slams. So I've, I haven't played Damon in like a tournament format, but um, honestly, <laughs> there's one pro that I wish I could have played that I didn't. Like you and you and uh, Krim were definitely top two for me, and Matt, Matt, both Matts, Nate shot and formal. You want Nate shot? I would have loved to play Nate shot and formal. I mean, where I watched Nate. You played Nate shot. That would have been like low key bullying. <laughs> Bully not, ball. Yo, man, you might have got fucking bullied. <laughs> but I would say both the Matts, like formal and Nate. I would have loved to play them just because of like one Matt. Because I used to watch, like I said, I used to watch you and him in Black Ops Two. So you two were like the first two people I even fucking knew about. Yeah. And formal just because it's formal. Like you guys were like on that. Everyone would like everyone used to gas Matt up like in IW and all that type of shit. So I would have just loved to seen like that level. You know what I'm saying? Like 
would have loved to play you in AW. You know what I'm saying? Like, never got to see that. So, like, definitely playing. It was playing, very different. Yeah. You actually had to aim back then. Yeah. Like no you, dynamic back then. <laughs> yeah. But, like, you, like, Porter, Porter and Ghost, you and AW, like, I would have loved to play, like, those type of players in those yeah. type of moments just to see, like, what the fuck was going on. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, the era now is just so different. You know what I'm saying? Game's different. Like More you frames, said, dynamic. dynamic PC. A lot of shit's different. So yeah, it's I would have just liked to play in the other era. Back then, you just plug your shit in. You and show you up. It. Plug your shit in. Just run it. Change your sense. Let's yeah, go. Yeah. There was no no nitty gritties. Like some people have different, so many different settings. Fucking, you load into an attachments. There's twenty different of them. Yeah. So I would have just liked to play in the golden era. Honestly, that, that what you guys call it, like Black Ops Three, AWs, Black Ops Four. It was unbelievable. It would have been so fun. Like, but it's still like popping. It's still no, like good now. No, no, no. It's still good now for sure. But like, I would just like to play back then. And like, Hopefully. just. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I would just like to play back then, honestly. But yeah, both the mats for sure. And just open EO6. That game looks good. It looks promising. It looks very good. It I've, looks promising. I've heard from people that have played it, you know, two people have played it, and they've told me it's fun. I don't know if we can put that in. You love to get hyped. Talk to me a little bit about where that comes from, from your childhood. Your, did you play sports growing up? Like, where does that super competitive nature come from for you? Because you're up there. Boring. Yeah, now nah, for me, ah oh man, honestly, the competitive nature comes from, I would say, honestly, my one of my cousins, um, one of my cousins, his name's Mirza. He's like, like I grew up with him. He, he literally, I was like, since I since birth, me and him super competed, just playing games, anything, soccer. Um, I was very competitive with him, and like I would cry if he beat me in FIFA. Like I would be so pissed. I would miss school, grinding, to get better at like games because I didn't want him to be better than me. I don't know, man. I was very like, if I lost, I'd be very frustrated. Then yeah. some kids lose, they just cry, they don't care. Like for me, I was frustrated. I was so mad. And then uh, I played soccer since like, I don't know, the age of 10. Got to like a semi-pro level. And I used to train like, I used to train every five days a week, twice a day. Yo, he low key, we were doing a wing stop shoot and that touch when you kicked yeah, it over, yeah. you yeah. almost hit Ken in the head. But that was actually <laughs> like low key. Kind of nice. Kind of, kind of nice. Yeah. No, nah, I played soccer like, I used to train literally like five days, five days, twice a day. So like morning session, afternoon session, then a pool session. I was fucking grinding. Like, and you know, we compete with one another. So I feel like my sporting, like playing a sports team. Um, have you played a sports team? Like, did you ever play sports? Yeah, growing up. I, I mean, I, I quit in high school. Yeah. And then that's like when I started my yeah. gaming career. Yeah. But yeah, I played up until high school. Yeah. So like, that's where basically most of my shit came is one, my cousin started it, like lit the fire. The sports team kind of took it. And then when I play games, like when I play with my friends from school, I would be better than them at FIFA, 2K, COD, any game, WWE, whatever, UFC. Like I would always want to be like the best at every game. Just want to play with my friends. You got to sit there, shit talk them. Shit talk, yeah. They just feel like shit. And I'm just like fucking <laughs> shitting fucking on it. That's insane. <laughs> That's insane. But like that, that was my like thing. Like I was like, I love that like factor. And Dude, I just loved video games. My fucking friends, my friends' brothers and like, when I'd go to like a party or something in high school, they'd always try to make me like play, play for you. I'm like, dude, what the <laughs> yeah, fuck am I, a traveling circus? Like, <laughs> Same shit. I'm not playing COD on your 60 inch. <laughs> like, they do. I don't they think I could just plug in <laughs> and be nasty. Like, bro. Yeah. One time my friend had a headset on and he was talking, but I was playing for him. And he's like, fucking shit. Like, he was like getting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like, I'm like, oh my God. Like, this guy thinks, like, all his friends think it's him playing, but it's me. But yeah, for me, it's just, just having that, like, I don't know. I'm just super competitive about everything. Yeah. And honestly, when, when you're on stage, it's the highest level of competition. I mean, you have to be you have fucking to be ruthless up there. Fucking, right? yeah, it, it's, it has to be you against yeah, the world. everyone. Yeah, and the team versus everyone. So I'm very hype. And I, for me, the energy naturally comes out. It's not forceful. It's very natural because I'm fucking... Like, and in the tournaments, I have no voice. I'm fucking croaky. I, 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 can't, hear, I can't even talk. Yeah. So for me, it's just... A, yeah, the, I love the competitiveness. Man. Like, honestly, without the competitiveness, I wouldn't play. Like, I couldn't just play COD, you know? I need the competitive side of it. Yeah, wait till, wait till you stream. Mm. Wait till you start streaming. I stream. It's fucking rank plays. After your career, you still got a long career yeah. ahead. Rank plays tough. We've come close a couple times. We've only got one with the dynasty. What would it mean for you to get the second ring for Optic? Bring it home, man. Getting the second ring for Optic would be fucking insane. I mean, that's like I said, the dream. If I could pick one thing. Before I started my career to win would be winning a ring with Optic. I mean, as cliche as it sounds, like it's just the number one goal for every player. I mean, winning it on Optic, 
compared to winning on any other team, it's not even close. It's not even comparable. It's fucking insane. So especially at home, that's another thing, which is huge. Winning in Texas, Optic Champs, I don't think we've ever hosted one before. No. So this is the first time ever hosting one. And technically you know, not. Technically, we're not. We are hosting it, but not technically hosting it. Yeah. It's not like a, it's not like an optic. You got to watch what you say. Yeah, because people are going to start thinking we're getting cheese. Scrappy might fucking tune in <laughs> and I, start talking shit. Don't worry about that guy. Don't worry about that guy. That guy's handled. Um, <laughs> um, but um, I was going to say, yeah, no, for me, it would be winning the ring. Like, that is like, like I said, like, it, it, it I wouldn't. I don't. I don't want to say it satisfies me. Like I'm gonna be like, fuck. I'm hanging it up after that. Obviously, I want to keep playing, but yeah. that is like the pinnacle of like success. You know, like winning a ring on the optic is like words can't describe. So many people want to fucking do that. Not many get the chance. So yeah, for me, it would be unbelievable. I just know that Disneyland after that shit would be insane. Insane. <laughs> insane. If you could give me advice, right? Because when you're winning the ring, like you said, like it's an insane experience. When you were in that winning moment at champs, right? Because you, like you said, you fell short times where maybe you thought you should have been in better scenario, scenarios, but you weren't. When you won in IW, right? Tell me what was for you, like the, the, like the moment where you knew you're going to win and what and how would you explain like how you sealed it? Because it's the winning moment. Sometimes people don't recognize it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? No, nah, we knew. We knew that when we won champs, we knew that we won like, I mean, not when we reset, because we reset, we bracket reset to win. Mm. So we lost. Oh, you came from losers. Yeah, we lost in the winner's final to Envy. Slasher, right? Yeah, yeah, and we were like, yo, our fucking boxes are bad. We got the boxes changed. We What's the boxes? We played on PlayStation. Oh, my God. Yeah, so we were like, yo, we got to change our boxes. Change the boxes, and once we bracket reset them, we smoked them so hard. We were like, dude, there's no way they're, like, we were just rolling. Yeah, and it's yeah. a little different now, because now, obviously, it's only the one format's series. format's different, yeah. Uh, it's a best of nine, best of nine at champs, I think. Yeah. Uh, and you'll get like a slight veto advantage. Slight veto advantage, yeah. Um, so it is different, but like we just knew, like once that ball you was had rolling, the, you had the fire. Like with our team, the dynasty, like if we got rolling, it was over. It was over. It's like we just had to get to that. One of you is just getting two. And I feel like it's kind of the same with you guys. Like yeah. once you guys are rolling and the slang is on, it's hard to. Stop. There's only like just there's only one team that can beat you in its face. Yeah. It's like if you guys get to that point, if you guys are both playing your best COD, yeah. It's like a 50-50, Like who's gonna clutch up? Who's gonna make yeah? The who's gonna plays. make the winning play? Yeah. Like with us, it was like I feel like it was kind of different because I feel like when we were rolling, no one could come. No close. one could fuck with us. Yeah. But now it's like the competition is so elevated. Yeah. And the top four is so close. Um, I mean, I I think Phase is the only like team Competent, that can yeah, stop yeah. you. When you would, when you would like, say for example, like the bracket resets, you guys are rolling, right? You guys know you guys are shooting hot. There's like that ten minute period where like you guys aren't doing much, probably just resetting. Dude, we knew we won after like, dude, we were on map two. I remember, I think it was a Crusher SND. We were or Scorch. I think it was Crusher. Yeah. We were just like, dude, they can't. They fuck can't kill with us. us. Yeah. Like map that, two in the reset, we're up one zero, and we're like, dude, they, they literally yeah. can't kill and us. You, and yeah, that's like, you know what's funny, like. The way you say that is exactly how we felt the other week. The other week and against Toronto, exactly. you're just slamming. In the rear, we're up 180 points. Me and Anna flipping spawns. But it yeah. doesn't even matter. If we watch back, we're like, bro, why do we hit this? Why are we flipping them? But you just have that level of delusion. 100%. I mean, that's, that's like the best thing. When you know you've won. Yeah. And you just keep that pressure piling. And advice. I mean, there's, there's really no advice I can give you. I mean, you guys are doing everything right. It seems like you guys have a good head on your shoulders in practice, which has always been something that like, I mean, obviously, I haven't always been known to be the best practice person yeah. because, like, I like to troll and have yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah, fun, yeah. But, like, sometimes you have to. You can't just yeah, be, like... Yeah, you can't be so serious all the time. Um, but, yeah, just keep... I mean, I always say you win matches in practice. So, it's yeah. like, you just got to fucking just dial in. Dial these in. Next, this next, like, month is... Month and a half, yeah. Just dial in for a month and a half, and that's it. Yeah. That's... 100 percent just, lock, just in. Be lock in yeah no, that's lock the fuck in simple as shit just lock in whoever wants it the most when you get there i mean it doesn't always work that way in cod but whoever gets there is the most prepared wants it the most i mean yeah. that's like yeah you gotta nah. set yourself up that's 100 yeah, set yourself up for success and everything it everything, comes it comes all the work's done before yep 100 nah, percent. that's good advice but i mean a lot of people have been like you know would would you be resentful like matt is like would you be mad if the boys went and got a ring? And it's like, dude, it is so far from like that. Yeah. If you guys get a fucking ring, you'll have. Like I said, it's kind of like vicariously living through you guys. Like, yeah. 
like in Toronto, like we're up there watching, like I could feel the energy. I could feel yeah. the emotions that you guys were feeling, not playing, not to that level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like I could feel that fucking just energy. Yeah, like yeah. I was up there. I was up there like fucking shaking yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, like yeah. I almost like I got lightheaded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like you have that feeling. You know what it feels like. And you see us doing it, it's like it gives you that good vibe. But like you said, it makes you feel like fuck. Like you miss that feeling. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It gives you that feeling. If of, you guys win champs in that arena, it is going to be. It will be crazy. It's just going to be like, it's going to set like the vibes and just the culture at Optic. Like it's going to make everything just better. Better. Because when the teams, when Optic's COD team is winning, the vibes, everything is just better. Like, vibes everyone's are happy. Everyone's walking around. Like it's just good vibes. better. Yeah. No, I agree. 100%. So. I'm not trying to put pressure on no. you. <laughs> yeah. But got to get mean, that shit done. Nah. For and to sure. see Ant win and especially like Brandon, I mean I've been playing with him forever. For to see time. him like finally get that moment yeah. would be I mean you too. Yeah. I, I got love for you too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like got team with them. Dev, so you've been them, you've had a lot of experience with them. It's the lows and the highs. Yeah. To see them get up there, I mean I I'm praying, man. Even yeah. if, even if you guys lose major four. This get, chance. Get chance. That shit would be so. Nah, well, sure. AG, my fucking boy. Appreciate it, man. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Green Wall, make sure you guys are there, man.